Can I ask you a question? How many of you have a network that's faster than one gig in your house? No, seriously, tell me. I want to know, leave a comment. My home network is 2.5 gig because I have to copy large video files back and forth and 10 gig is still prohibitively expensive. Not that many devices in my house support it though. I mean, I've got a QNAP server, I've got a couple of high-end PCs, and weirdly enough, this cheap Chinese mini PC that I bought from AliExpress. This is a Topton M6. It was only about 200 bucks with 16 gigs of RAM and no storage. Although the Celeron version I have doesn't seem to be available anymore. You can only get a Pentium for just under 180 bucks. Now the obvious thing to do would be to install Windows on this, install Halo, and try and play it. And I will do that, but I actually want to demonstrate a real use for something like this. A low-cost, high-speed NAS. Check the chapters for NAS setup if you don't care about Windows. Don't worry, I understand. But first, disassembly. Well, second actually, because I've already done the tests on this and I know it's awesome, but I didn't want to break it, so we disassemble it afterwards. You're gonna judge me for the way I've installed the SSD. <laughs> Look at that, no holder, no need. This one supports SATA and NVMe drives. This one only supports SATA. But of course, I only had a SATA from a Steam Deck. So that's what's in there. So let's have a look. How do we take this apart? Oh, there we go. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> I'm stupid. Well, that's good. Look, we've got the real-time clock battery there, or the C CMOS battery there. Uh, that's probably going to be Wi-Fi antenna, and we have an absolutely piddly little cooler. It is copper though, so the uh, the listing on AliExpress was accurate. Oh, the antenna. I don't want to rip those off. Although I'm not using Wi-Fi on this, so it wouldn't be the end of the world. Let's have a look. Yep, Intel AX201D2W. That will be the uh, Wi-Fi. And that's it. That's the whole computer. So is this just adhesive? Looks like it. Wow. That's, there's just nothing to it, is there? Well, let's take the cooler off, just for funsies. Well, these are different ways. Fan comes off like that. Ooh, there's a heat pipe. Look at that. Actual heat pipe. I'm amazed. And got four sprung screws. Although, was the heat... Oh. That one was loose. That might explain something you'll see later in the video. Well, I did not do this beforehand, so that is not my fault. That would make a lot of sense, QC pass, but the cooler isn't secured properly. Yeah, right. And look at that, there's the tiny little chips. Wow, they're small, aren't they? Well, there you go. I guess now we've got it apart and I've shown you what it's like in the, on the inside, I guess we'll put it back together and go test it. Yes, I reran all my tests and re-recorded everything after securing the cooler properly. If you see footage from before, it will be clearly marked. I want to give this thing the best shot possible to impress. Not that it matters because the temps are still pretty toasty. I had a real problem running Windows 10 on this. It would blue screen constantly. I suspect it's missing a driver or something. Windows 11 on the other hand was extremely reliable. We're looking at an Intel Celeron N5105. 4 cores, no multi-threading, and 16 gigs of memory. You can configure the RAM at purchase time, but it's not user upgradable, unlike the storage. IO is solid with a single Type-C, 2.5 gig LAN, HDMI, and three USB 3 ports. Windows 11 can chug on this thing, but I bet it would be just fine if all you were doing was writing emails. The 16 gigs of RAM certainly helps. In fact, it plays YouTube, it works great as a client for Steam Link, and it can play 4K Blu-ray files, no issue. For laughs, I tried re-encoding that 4K RIP to 1080p, and I was getting about 6 to 7 FPS. My 5900X gets around 60 FPS with the same settings, so the Celeron isn't exactly a powerhouse, but it is still usable for day-to-day -day tasks. 
like perhaps gaming? Halo CE honestly runs pretty well, with the original graphics that is. It can often hit 60 at 720p, but before repasting we were CPU limited. After repasting and securing the cooler properly, oh it made no difference. Well, more fool me for wasting my thermal paste. Enough of this. I want to see how it works as a NAS like the video title promised. I'm going to install Open Media Vault and plug in a USB SSD to use as mass storage. Here we go, let's check out the BIOS. Okay, set to boot from the installer disk, here comes Linux. Uh oh, it can't see the built-in NIC, even when we manually pick it from the list. That's fine, normal teething issues. I'll use a USB network card until we can get into the OS. Gives me a warning about picking the drive. That's definitely useful for us since we want the OS on the NVMe and the storage on the SATA. And now we wait. I fixed the NIC not showing up by running sudo omv first aid after connecting it to the Debian archive. Amusingly, it saw my 1080p capture card as a 4K display, so you get to see teeny tiny command line typing. Type the IP you chose into a web browser and log in with the built in admin account. By default, the password is Open Media Vault, but obviously change that as soon as possible. I recommend you set a static IP, either through your router or on the server itself. That way it won't change at random and suddenly all your mounts and firewall rules break. On my router, you just add a reservation in the DHCP table like this. In the web interface, you go to Network, Interfaces, Edit, and then change it from DHCP to Static and enter the details you want to use. After setting a static IP and changing the password, we have to wipe the drive we want to use Then we need to create and mount a file system. ext4 is the default and that's fine. Then create a shared folder. Since I'm going to be using Windows, I'll also go into SMB and enable it for the new shared folder. Now all we have to do is open the start menu on a client machine and type backslash backslash and then the IP or host name of our server. Log in. Et voila, a network share for us to use. Now let's see what speeds we can get. What big file can we use? What about that 4K Blu-ray rip I was encoding? That's almost 80 gigs. The most you'll see over 1 gig is about 110 megabytes per second, with a theoretical max of 125. So the theoretical speed over 2.5 gig is about 312 megabytes per second. If we figure a similar 12% loss, maybe we're going to get 275 megabytes per second? Look at that! 282 megabytes per second. The CPU on the server jumped, but not by that much. And if we open up Task Manager, we can see we're hitting 2.4 gigabits per second. This thing only draws 12 watts. It beats my Synology on both power draw and performance. You know that's not too bad for a cheap Chinese computer and an SSD I soured from a dumpster. Open Media Vault is really awesome and unlocks the potential of this thing. In case you wanted to run, I don't know, Plex or Jellyfin in a Docker container and watch that 4K Blu-ray rip that we copied on your big TV. I don't know, just a suggestion. I'll see you next time.